This is San Pauli. Despite being in Germany's second tier of football and without a single major trophy to its name, it has become one of the world's most iconic teams. And it's all down to their fans. These are no ordinary supporters. They love football, of course, but for them, San Pauli transcends sport. For them, football is about politics, protest, and music. Skull and crossbone emblems can be seen all over their neighborhood. These fans see themselves in the vanguard of a global struggle against xenophobia, inequality and racism. With over 500 supporters clubs outside Germany, they're able to spread their message far beyond their Hamburg home. So who are San Pauli? Dave Doman, what am I doing here in Germany? Dave is a musician and the lead singer in a band based here in Hamburg. He also runs a free FC San Pauli music project for the local community, one of the most diverse in Germany. This club is actively against fascism, homophobia, racism, misogyny. Moin. And so like-minded people from around the world can support a club that has a greater meaning than the sport. What brings people together is the, the neighborhood aspect of this club transformed globally. But San Pauli's history is far from innocent. And for fans like Dave, it's that dark past and fears of a resurgence of the extreme right that drives their passion. For this club was once a symbol of loyalty towards Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party, something later generations of supporters would look back upon in horror. Today, by encouraging local historian Christoph Nagel to put on an exhibition of its own history, the club is sending out a warning about the rise in popularity of far-right parties like the AFD, which espouses anti-Semitic and racist policies and has become a political power in modern Germany. If you follow what people in the AFD are saying, it's totally copied from the playbook that Joseph Goebbels and Adolf Hitler have invented and, and uh, the other Nazis gun. Today, you would expect that, of course, FC St. Pauli would take a stand against Nazis, but back then they didn't. Uh, actually, there was a certain level of collaboration and uh, one of the members of uh, FC St. Pauli was actually a very, very high-ranking Nazi, was the second highest-ranking Nazi in uh, Hamburg during that time. Nazis and fascists have no place in St. Pauli today. The club has established a global profile that now inspires fans from all over the world. Yet despite that attention, the priority is still their own neighborhood, which they see as a proud example of social integration for the rest of Germany and far beyond. Here, all are welcome, no matter their race, gender, sexual orientation, religion or color. You know, I grew up here, I'm raised here. All my life I'm in this district. With funding support from FC San Pauli, Asmara Haptizian dedicates herself to helping refugees in Hamburg. I'm a fan of the skull hat. It gives us an identity no, me, no. of being like San Pauli, because it's more that you are like a renegade, like an outsider. 
and it is more than just the football itself. But of course, we love to cheer and wild and be loud. And Every day is a challenge for Asmara. She's well aware that for many in Germany, refugees are not welcome. Because the right wing is winning more and more supporters. So everybody's considered to be illegal. Everybody's considered to be criminal. They survived the Zahara. They survived the Mediterranean, Libya. But they break down here because they don't understand why they've been treated so bad and why they are so misunderstood. Sao Paulo is doing a lot of legal support, which is so important. You know? okay. Hold on, our friends are coming. Watch out. But I have my ID, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, this is the so-called task force, my best friends. It's a special unit to really control foreigners. Say it loud, say it clear. Refugees are welcome here. I got in touch through the activism. So they are so-called left, and in and, and, and Germany especially, they say like left terrorist extremists, which doesn't make sense at all. It is good to be left. Anti-fascism is nothing bad. But San Paoli fans pay a high price for their uncompromising stance, finding themselves on a counter-terrorism guide alongside militant extremists and neo-Nazis. There's nothing that this club stands for that could be deemed inappropriate. If you're not an anti-fascist, then you're a fascist. So how can you put anti-fascist organizations' logos on a terror watch list? For me, this is a great place to stand in front of the away block to really demonstrate what St. Pauli is about. You'll see no person is illegal and no football for fascists. It's particularly relevant today. San Pauli are hosting a crunch match against bitter rivals, Dinamo Dresden. I think it's an understatement to say this is the quiet before the storm. During the Cold War, Dresden was in Soviet-ruled East Germany. After reunification, many young East Germans turned to right-wing extremism, blaming mainly immigrants for any problems they faced. You always want to beat a club like Dresden because you want to show the world that the good guys can sometimes win. Almost 30,000 home fans will be joined by an expected 2,000 Dresden supporters. We have more security than, than usual. My name is Sven Brooks and I'm responsible for organizing all this stuff around the home matches, including security things. Both supporters groups are not best friends and uh, yeah. last, last match over here, last home match against Dresden, we had some trouble in the visitors section. I wouldn't say all the Dresden fans are, are Nazis, that's not the point, but uh, some of them inside, no question. Today, both teams are in, in danger of being uh, relegated, so Dresden is last in the table, we are 15. So that means uh, the fans on both sides are nervous and uh, it depends what's happening on the pitch as well. Da geht es doch nicht mehr darum, ob einer St. Pauli-Fan ist. Die reagieren schon aggro. Der gehört nicht zu uns. Das ist noch eine Spur schärfer, als wenn irgendwas anderes da ist. Hopefully, there won't be any violence, but I guess the actual chances of that are no. Without the police presence, unfortunately, I'd have to say that the old timers on the North Block would probably get stormed by the kids from Dresden. Most fans are hoping for all the drama to be on the pitch. The team will do it, yeah? If they will run and fight and bite and crap, yeah, they will do it, they will do it. Including fans visiting from other countries. We know there are left-wing club who are into 
solidarity and the support of asylum seekers and the support of gay rights and all sorts, mate. Yeah. And we love it. I hope we win and that's it. I only want to win. Both of us are at the bottom of the league, so it's a very tense match and uh, there's lots of animosity between Dresden friends and our friends. It's left against right and all that. San Pauli wins 3-1. We will win. <laughs> During the match, San Pauli dominates, but struggle to breach the stubborn Dresden defense. In the final minute, San Pauli have one last chance, but the game ends in disappointment. At the final whistle, the predicted violence erupts. Outside, a strong police presence means only a small number of arrests are necessary. And leistet bitte den Anweisungen der Polizeikräfte Folge, sonst werdet ihr auch nicht in Mitleidenschaft irgendwelcher polizeilicher Maßnahmen gezogen. Unfortunately, there was a little drama off the pitch. Uh, as we saw some Dresden fans try to invade the North Stand. It's a sad state. I wish people would concentrate on, on the match and leave the other stuff behind. In a week's time, it's the city's big derby match between San Pauli and Hamburg SV. It promises to be another high security match and also a tough game for underdog San Pauli. If you can't beat the team in last place, how are you going to beat the team that's been in first place for the majority of the season? We'll have to see. <laughs> A few days after the Dresden match, in the small town of Hanau, Germany's political divisions are in evidence again, this time with much more shocking violence. Nine people from the town's immigrant community are murdered by a gunman with extreme racist beliefs. After the shooting, the killer returned home to murder his own mother before committing suicide. For San Pauli, this makes their anti-fascist campaigning more important than ever. Today, club president Oka Gottlich has invited a local group on a boat trip, Grannies Against Fascism. We're in times in Germany where um, the right-wing parties and right-wing thinking um, has overcome again and where lots of things happening, so murders are happening, political statements are happening, which we thought should never ever happen again in Germany and we have to stand up against those people. It wasn't until the 1980s that FC San Pauli began its anti-fascist journey. Derelict apartment blocks around the stadium began to attract squatters and left-wing activists who then adopted FC San Pauli as their own. Despite differences between some of the older, conservative fan base, the club was relieved to see supporters return to the stands. Right-wing groups were banned, and fans disenchanted with the rise of violent far-right factions within the city's other team, Hamburg SV, moved to join their ranks. The left were taking control. Dirk Matsk, now manager of this music venue in the San Pauli district, was back then a Hamburg fan. I have problems in the, in the 80s with the police. From, they're fighting after the game. Eventually, Dirk had enough of the violence and switched his allegiance to San Pauli. The football was less impressive, but the neighborhood had a vibrant and progressive scene. This was a mix, not only football and drinking. This was uh, football, drinking and music. This attracted more fans, including Sven, 
who helped develop FC Saint Pauli's left-wing identity. We had a political and punk rock background, so uh, confrontation with uh, fascists was not new for us. There's no match tonight, but the San Pauli Stadium is still a hive of activity. Funded by the club, Dave and Asmara are holding one of their regular free music sessions for refugee rappers. We're all here because of FC Zen Pauli. This is part of what it means to be a supporter of this club, is to involve yourself in the community. Das war ein bisschen so schwer. Sie wollen nicht mehr Flüchtlinge her, aber dann hat ich mit Asmara kennengelernt. Dann hat wir haben hier in San Pauli gekommen. San Pauli sind so wie eine Familie. As we say, refugees are welcome. All people are welcome here unless they're fascist. On the way to a big meeting before the derby against Hamburg with the, the security officer, police, public transport uh, people and stuff like that. You don't make friends in this job because you say, I have to forbid this. Then the supporters say, oh, not good. And, and if you say, oh, I allow this, police says, oh, that's not good. And not only some Pauli fans, a, a lot of football fans all over the country has a lot of trouble with the police. Despite the obvious need for a strong police presence at some matches, Many Germans fear that football fans are being used as guinea pigs for wider police powers. The whole country is going, in my view, into a more right-wing way, more laws to give the police or other organizations the power to control people everywhere. Where do you draw the line? What's the difference between protection and intimidation? That is at the root of, of the discussion. This match could define the entire season for San Pauli, and few expect them to get even a draw, never mind the win, with Hamburg at the top end of the table, and San Pauli in danger of dropping into the relegation zone. We have problems when we look on the table and on the sporting side on the pitch, but it's a derby, everything is possible, I think. But the stakes are far higher than dropping down a division. Relegation would be an absolute catastrophe for this club. The club would lose the financial ability to continue so many of the social projects that make it so special. The thing about San Pauli is and keep running into people, you know? <laughs> how you feel today? Good. Good. It's the day before the big derby. Dave and Dirk are on an environmental protest march in the St. Pauli district. The club promotes a wide range of eco-friendly programs, such as climate-neutral match days. And there are plenty of their fans here today who are as concerned about climate change as they are about fascism. Dave and Dirk are still trying to come to terms with the shootings in Hanau. That's something that I expect to happen where I'm from. But it must be an, an, an insane shock for you. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, gun violence in Germany yeah, is in very Germany rare. It's, it's very rare. Yeah. And then on top of that, for it to be racist. The conversation moves on to tomorrow's crucial game. Why are you nervous? I'm not nervous about the match, though. No, me too. Me too. I'm not. Like, so for me. We only can win. <laughs> It's evening, and Dirk is holding drinks at his venue. We have a meeting point in front of the Knust for drinking and pyrotechnic, maybe. Such is the importance of this match 
that the San Pauli district is taken over by the club's fans as derby fever grips the city. We all together, you see this? We're going in the rain all together to support the team the night before. As if an order is given, they start marching through the city in a show of defiance to FC Hamburg. The city of Hamburg is braced for Derby Day. Thousands of San Pauli fans, led by their ultras, are making the long journey from their own neighborhood to their rival's stadium. For San Pauli fans, it's not just the threat of relegation that hangs over them. It's the fear of not just losing, but getting thrashed by their greatest rivals. The derby fever is especially intense. If Hamburg are promoted as expected, then even if San Pauli escape relegation, this could be the final match between the two teams for years to come. Whoever comes out on top will have the bragging rights as Derby Sieger, winner of the Derby. Dirk arrives in plenty of time. San Pauli is my family and my family is inside San Pauli. This gives me a very cool feeling. Einmal nur Hallo sagen. Nee, wir Hallo. So. This is my son, Leon, and this is Karen, my ex-wife. It's not just football, it's family, the whole thing. We are very nervous now, and uh, very nervous. I no. hope that's... Uh, <laughs> we don't lose. Yeah, we yeah. don't lose. <laughs> not all opposing fans arrive separately. I'm a HSV fan, he is St. Pauli fan. We, we are... do love, love each other we and we are hopeful for a nice derby, brother. Yes. While football can reflect and even intensify social divisions, a match is also a place where people can show their solidarity. Before the match begins, the fans of both sides hold a minute's silence for the victims of Hanau, with the players wearing black armbands. Nearly 60,000 people united against extremism. Soon though, the sporting rivalry ramps up with San Pauli desperate for any kind of result, anything except the defeat that most expect. And while the atmosphere in the stadium is electric, elsewhere too, the fans are on the edge of their seats, in Germany and far beyond. As expected, San Pauli are under pressure right from kickoff. Hamburg have the first chance but San Pauli are saved by the crossbar. Hamburg's dominance is so great, it's clear why they're at the top end of the table. Then suddenly, against the run of play, the visitors break out of defense and score. <laughs> San Pauli grow in confidence and attack their greatest foes once again. 2-0, San Pauli fans think they're dreaming. When the final whistle blows, they are in seventh heaven. It's a victory few would have predicted. But they are the Derby Sieger, champions of Hamburg. Derby Sieger, Derby Sieger, hey, hey, hey. A massive day for San Pauli fans, that was the result that everyone was hoping for. Hoping, but never truly expecting. The dream now is to avoid relegation and continue the fight as they see it for the moral high ground in Germany. 
Well, football is uh, kind of the fire that everyone gathers around. And FC St. Pauli is one of the forces who can bring active anti-Nazi politics into the mainstream. That evening at Dirk's venue, the Knust, Dave and St. Pauli fans show they still know how to mix football and music. And despite now being a worldwide corporate brand, fans hope FC San Pauli can hold on to a little of its pirate and punk heritage. <laughs> 